I'm Bear Grylls. Now, I'm in the alligator-infested swamps of the Everglades. This place is unforgiving. I've now finished with the swamp, and I'm on to dry land. But here, there are new hazards, like snakes and black bears. But finding food will always be a priority. Look at this, a little tree frog, and just scurrying around in the grass there. And you can actually eat these, any of these uh, frogs in the Everglades are fine to eat. They're no poisonous ones, you get poisonous toads, but they're much bigger and rougher. And as they say, any frog in the Everglades uh, is a good frog. It's too small to cook, and the first bite must kill it. Otherwise, it will wriggle all the way down. Mm. A bit more calories at least. Uh. Okay, let's keep going. There's a pretty clear game trail here and you can see where, uh, where the grass ends. It's back to the bare soil running off into the grass. Uh, but where there's animal tracks, it will often lead to food. So I'm just going to follow this for a little bit. See where it goes. Animal tracks are always worth following for a little while, as they can often lead you to water and to food. But don't follow them for too long, as they can also lead you off course. Wow, great fruits. Yeah, look, see up there? I tell you, finding these out here is really, really unusual. These are not native. Uh, to the region and coming across citrus fruit in the Everglades only means one thing, that this area here was probably used as an old Seminole camp. The Seminole tribe moved here during the Florida Wars in 1817. The swamp was a refuge against the US Army. And there's an orange tree as well here. Yeah, a little, little unripe orange, but this tells me this was definitely an old Seminole camp here. And the Spanish brought these oranges over uh, to trade, and then the Seminole tribe brought them here into the Everglades. And... Oh, quite sharp, but really good source of vitamin C. But this camp is definitely no longer used, and all these do now is provide food and energy for all the animals, all the hogs, and the likes of me. Oh, bit in my eye, ow. This would be the perfect place for you to set up camp. This branch here can make a pretty nice, like, top beam, and then all I need is a couple of bits like this, either side, and it'll make a nice little A-frame shelter. Lash two supports together at the mouth of the shelter. And once again, the cabbage palm makes excellent cordage but it has other uses too. What I'm using is just the stalks of the frond to make the frame here. Once the uprights are in place, make and tie cross bracings to complete the structure. Then lay the fan-shaped palms over the top and that keep the rainwater off. Making fire is always important. It keeps predators away and also lifts morale. This is a four-pointed fire and you can see these four logs uh, coming out. And this is a very efficient fire, it's slow burning. But also it's a very traditional fire for the Seminole tribe. And they'd use this a lot when they were being hunted and trapped by the US Army. And if they ever heard danger coming, they could pull these apart and the fire would die down pretty quickly. And once the danger has passed, they can put it back together again and build the fire up uh, very quickly. <laughs> 